Hello everyone, how you doing? Hope you're all well. So this is like the last part of the first part of my final year project. So uh, I'm in my learning stage right now. And as part of that learning stage, I've broken that down into three stages in which the first part is I'm just building the general uh, entire project off of commercial products available. So I've got a solar panel, which goes into a charge controller, which charges a battery, which then outputs five volts which goes into a boost converter, which is boosted from five volts up to 12 volts, which goes to a function generator and outputs and sine wave. We've got all of that working and it works brilliantly. So now what I wanna do is I wanna figure out how can I actually get this beautiful thing powered from this. So what I want is I want the, I mean, it's just crazy to think about it really. <laughs> I want to somehow power a Raspberry Pi from this whole uh, setup and just as I'm as I'm think as I said that now I'm like this is a bit ridiculous because this is only a 5 volt panel and so powering this Raspberry Pi 4 which I believe requires 3 amps or 2.5 amps of current that's going to be a bit tricky we're going to need an external power source which isn't going to work so I think I'm going to have to get a Raspberry Pi 0 I know I've got one somewhere let me dig one out but yeah the plan is to basically figure out how we can power a Raspberry Pi. Probably not this one, but a Raspberry Pi nonetheless. How we can get that powered from this whole system. And in that way, the hope is that the student or the hobbyist or whoever's using this would be able to program that Raspberry Pi using my tutorials to do stuff and perhaps even control uh, this, this system. But for now, what I'm interested in is can we get enough or can we get a circuit fully working whereby our solar panel is able to charge our battery and is able to output an AC uh, output as well as powering a Raspberry Pi all at the same time? And I think that involves some fairly decent complex circuitry and I'm excited to do it. So this sounds like it's going to be easy, but I really don't think it's going to be. <laughs> so let's see. Let's get rid of this Raspberry Pi 4 first of all. And let's find the Raspberry Pi Zero. All right, so good news. As well as having the Raspberry Pi 4, I also have the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is nice. This is the wireless one. So we can compare the power consumptions between them, and I think it's going to be an obvious choice. I mean, just in terms of a price comparison as well, ideally I would like to include the Raspberry Pi in the kit, especially because I would like to try and add some more extra things to the kit, especially expand it as time goes on. And so... If I can include a microcontroller of some sort, whether it's an Arduino or Raspberry Pi um, or any other thing, to be honest with you, then it kind of makes it easier to build around and the kit doesn't, the kit can go in many different directions. Then you can go down the electronics route or you can go down the kind of programming, you know, um, Python, etc., C programming side of things. So, yeah, before I touch on the power consumption, let's talk about their price because obviously when it comes to the kit, I want the kit to be cheap. So if I'm going to be including a £45, £50, £60, £70 Raspberry Pi 4, that's going to be an expensive kit. So if I can include, you know, what's a Raspberry Pi Zero W? £15, you know, depending on their stock supplies. So £15 uh, Raspberry Pi is a lot better than the £45, £50, £60 one. So in terms of their power consumptions, I've got them all up here. So the Raspberry Pi... Let's go with the 4 first. The Raspberry Pi 4 requires 5 volts to work. They actually both work on 5 volts. This, though, needs 3 amps of current, you know, which getting 3 amps out of my solar panel. I don't know what the uh, amperage would be, and it should be something that actually I should calculate in a coming video, which I will do. I, uh, that's, that's actually quite important. But I don't know what the amperage is that coming out of this panel, but I know it's definitely not 3 amps. We can guarantee that. So the 0W only requires pretty much three times less than that, 1.2 amps, which is significantly less than three amps, right? So 1.2 amps. And in terms of, um, so they have a statistic here called typical bare board active current consumption. So I assume that's what the board by itself is going to be using. So it needs three amps to run and it needs 1.2 amps to run. But it's bare board current consumption is 600 milliamps here and 150 milliamps here. So sounds achievable, right? 
it sounds like I could get 1.2 amps into this Raspberry Pi. Now, I may need something to boost the current. I'm not sure. I don't even know how that would work, to be honest. But let's try and figure it out. If I can just power this Raspberry Pi, you know, attach it onto the end of this uh, solar charger, I'd be very happy with that. If we can get this running and displaying an output, you know, job done with this video. So let's set up our sine wave so that we can see that on our oscilloscope so we know that our sine wave is there. If I power the Raspberry Pi just directly from this solar charger using the USB port, I'm hoping that we don't have a drop in voltage here. And I'm hoping that the Raspberry Pi doesn't give me a warning to say that it's low uh, current because the Raspberry Pis, they do do that. They have like a flashing lightning bolt in the top left. So let's see. I'm hopeful here. All right, so I need to talk to you about something first. Don't laugh at my adapter situation. <laughs> Basically, the Raspberry Pi Zero uses the, um, oh, I can't get it out. It uses like the mini HDMI. So I've got a mini HDMI adapter going to a HDMI adapter going to a VGA. Because this screen that I've got on this desk is VGA only. So that's my adapter. And then I've just got the Raspberry Pi now being powered from a plug, from a wall plug. And so we should see on this screen here. Oh, I'm silly. I've unplugged it. <laughs> One second. Let's plug it back in. Okay, so Raspberry Pi is plugged in now. And uh, where's the LED for this? Uh, oh, there it is. LED's on. And you can see the screen, it, um, it flashed there. So, yes, the Raspberry Pi works fine. So now what we need to do is, well, let's wait for this to load first. Okay, there we go, cool. So the Raspberry Pi works fine. So if I unplug it from the wall plug, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it into the charge controller. So it's just gonna go in like so. Since it's got a USB output, and then we hope for the best. So at the moment, you can see that the charge, the solar panel is receiving enough voltage there. So let's just quickly check the voltage at this uh, panel, at the uh, panel input, right? So here we've got 3.5 volts. So I'm just going to put my LED lamp on top of it as well. I'm surprised that it's even illuminated with um, with the 3.5 volts. Seems quite low that. All right, so LED light over our panel. Let's uh, move this. We'll check the voltage again. There we go. 4.4 volts now. Cool. Okay, so let's connect the battery. And then hopefully we should see the screen turn on. So there we go. Now we've got our, my on LED on. <laughs> we won't connect the um, the five volt uh, boost converter and the sine wave. What we'll do is let's just plug in the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Let's see if that turns on. Oh, it's turned on. It's uh, the screen fully came on. That is incredible. That is absolutely incredible. <laughs> okay. I don't know how long it would last like this, but what I was most interested in is that does the does it work? Does just the concept of it work? <laughs> the uh the refinement of it and you know perhaps using a larger capacitor larger capacity battery um or you know, I don't know, using a larger solar panel, whatever. Like, I could I could deal with those things, but I just wanted to know, would it work? So, obviously, I don't have the AC sine wave output connected yet. We can do that. So, let's just connect in now the sine wave, the function generator, and see what happens. But as of right now, this is exciting. All right, so, um, we probably need to turn on the... the um, the oscilloscope which we'll do but let's just connect this for now and I'm just I'm just intrigued to see if the Raspberry Pi LED will turn off 
right it stayed on everything stayed on cool okay so we had four volts at our output for our, our sine wave and yeah the Raspberry Pi has literally stayed on which is fascinating wow would you look at that a beautiful sine wave with 4.22 volts right i mean it's kind of it's clip, clipped a little bit there but 4.22 volts 8 volts peak to peak on the output there all from this battery and the raspberry pi stayed on but yeah look at that so the raspberry the, the screen didn't turn on and actually what i want to do is let me um Hold up my oscilloscope output next to it as well. There, would you look at that? Raju Pi plus the oscilloscope. <laughs> this is fantastic. I cannot believe this. What a brilliant, like, what is, what is it that's doing? It's just this one charge controller. How amazing is that? That is phenomenal that we have, I wonder if I, if I remove the solar panel, how long it, how much, how long it would last for but let's just get a proper look at this so i'll lift i'll lift the panel up perhaps the t the i'll let you know if the raspberry pi turns off but that is incredible so the the, the charging light on the you can see there there's the red led it's, it goes off when i remove my light from the solar panel that is phenomenal look at that a solar panel to a charge controller power in a raspberry pi which is then sent to display via VGA to a monitor. And then five volts come into a boost converter, which is going to a function generator and producing a 4.2 volt sine wave. And obviously missed out the fact that the solar panel is charging the battery. And right now this whole process is being run off of this battery. Let's, let's actually take this opportunity to quickly check the voltage of the battery. Uh, so. So right now it's 3.97 volts. That's decent. And it, I'm just wondering if it's dropping. 3.96. You see it went down a little bit there. Let's just wait to see if we can watch it go to 3.95. I'm just intrigued to see how, you know, just to get an estimate of how long it would take. Let's say it drops every minute. I mean, that would be great, right? Let's say every 30 seconds. It will go every minute. If it drops every minute, then it will take 96 minutes to get to 3 volts. And 3.2 volts is when, it's, when it runs out. So it would take 76 minutes. So this it could do this for an hour. We'll see. Let's just see if this 9.6 drops to 9.5 in less than a minute. Right now, obviously, the Raspberry Pi isn't... It's not doing anything crazy. You know, I'm not mining any Bitcoin on the Raspberry Pi or anything. So, you know. But that's that's incredible. Look, it's actually still going. So... You know, this, but just based on this rough, rough, rough calculation, right? Just, you know, back of the napkin cal calculation. It's possible that this could run for over an hour. That is incredible. I do want to run some more tests, but I don't really understand power consumption and things like that yet. So I'm going to have to do some more research on that. But for now, you know, I would say this, this, the first part of my learning stage is complete. You know, this is exactly what I want. Now imagine if I could get somebody to actually physically make the circuitry for this charge controller, for this boost converter, for a sine wave output, right? Because that's all the circuitry is involved, right? You just literally need these three PCBs, these three, right? Get them to make it themselves on something like this, which is a perf board that I cut up. Literally get them to make that themselves, add a solar panel, that solar panel there, add a battery onto there. You know, and some output there for an oscilloscope or for, you know, USB output. Ah, oh, man, this is going to be incredible. So, yeah, I think for the next stage now, I'm going to try this again. But I'm going to try and do make my own charge controller. Obviously not my own, physically my own. That, that's that's to come, you know, hopefully in a few months time. But if I can buy some ch solar charge controller kits and replace, basically. So this is my own um, kit, right? So what I would like to do is I'm going to, in the next stage now, I'd like to replace these three circuits with my own DIY kit version. So we'll start off, I think from the next video, we'll start off by buying 
a solo charge controller kit and then we'll see if we can basically replace uh, this is gonna this 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 solar charge controller is incredible so i don't know if we're gonna be able to replace it maybe i should start with the boost converter first okay i think the boost converter is probably going to be easiest and then maybe if i could because i, I want to keep the power consumption as low as possible right so maybe if i can replace this whole big function generator with just a sine wave generator maybe i think i, I can i think you can get a small version of that so that would be cool to try and see if we can do that uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of possibilities to be honest with you. I need to have a look. I need to do some planning. I need to have a look to see what's available to buy because sometimes what's in my head doesn't match what's available on Amazon. So yeah, uh, if you have anything, any comments, any advice, leave it below. Uh, I always appreciate it. But for now, man, this is uh, this is great. This was thankfully a lot easier than I expected it to be. Brilliant. I'm well happy. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.